Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeline or CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Aaron Weike, who is in Minneapolis. How are you doing, Aaron? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, John. Of course, of course. And Aaron is the co-founder and CEO of Leadferno. And what we're going to talk about today is text messaging. And I think it's fair to say that uh, text with business, you know, business texting, it's kind of been in its infancy for a while and, you know, initial stages. But now it's, it seems to have the last while, it seems to have exploded and your phones are being lit up by text messages from businesses, uh, prospecting, all sorts of different things. So you say, we are, um, tell me about where, what's the state of text messaging today and how are businesses using it? And what stage would you say we are at the evolution of business use of text messaging? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll try to unpack uh, a number of questions <laughs> in there really quickly, John. See, I love to do that. I love to yep. throw five questions in one. <laughs> totally. Um, you know, one, I think, is where we're at. Uh, I think we're still in the infancy for businesses, uh, just as you alluded to, right? Text became this great personal channel to communicate in. Um, as with anything, once we adapt and we find something that's easy to use and benefits us um, and makes our lives a little easier and more efficient, it starts kind of uh, carrying over into the business world. And I think the pandemic uh, really kind of pushed it forward at maybe two, three X speed uh, for the last couple of years, because businesses were really looking for um, better ways to connect with their customers and having to change uh, servicing and delivering and communicating procedures them themselves. So from, from that side, I think we're still in its infancy, even though texting has, you know, been around for, you know, five plus years in the, in the business sense. The biggest shift that I see happening and exactly where we're focused is on two-way text messaging. And that's just using it as a normal communication channel instead of where we've primarily seen this is just a one-way channel, either sending out marketing blast, here's a deal of uh, the day, a sale we have going on, mm -hmm. do you need this service, uh, what political party are you in and when you will you donate uh, to our cause? Um, and appointment reminders. That's that's what we've seen from the last five plus years of it. But now we see customers like, no, I want to interact this way. I want to ask questions. I want to get answers. Uh, I want to follow up on things. I want to get reminders. Um, so two way is really where we see that going with businesses, and that's where we're putting our focus. And so, what what would be some of the the best ways of using that? Uh, uh, best practices best practices for for two-way texting? Because again, I could see it as something that could maybe go askew if it's not done properly. <laughs> yeah, everything can, right? Especially when you put it yeah. in the hands of marketers. Um, yeah, 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 for sure. The, I, I think the first being is uh, it's just a great um, lead capture or the, the least amount of barrier for conversion with customers. If they know they can just send a text to start interacting with you to get a question or two answered or to get set, something set up or to get something clarified, like that's going to work the best for just about anyone nowadays over a phone call where you maybe get a call tree, you have to leave a voicemail, then you have to get their return call back. You might be trading voicemails uh, or email that comes into an email inbox that's already throttled with all kinds of mm -hmm. messages and spam and, and everything else. So I think that's one great use for it. Um, we feel so much that way we integrated into what's easily called like a web to text widget. So you can start a text conversation right from the website, desktop or mobile on a business and start asking those questions as a consumer, as a prospect uh, to be able to get answers and start uh, establishing if this is a business that you want to work with. So I, I think that's one of the, the best uses for it. It's easy. It's familiar. It's trusted. It's a super low barrier to convert lurkers to leads on your website. And after that, then a business has a lot of options to how they can adopt this into their process as a great utility feature to make communication easier for that customer to get reminders on an appointment or uh, delivery, get clarification, uh, reach out with any additional ask before that service time or delivery time or whatever else is going mm -hmm. on. And then lastly, at the end, follow up. Um, how did we do? Yeah. Are you satisfied now that you've you know, we gave, we did this service a week ago. Uh, and then a step further, would you be willing to write us a review because you were satisfied and we did a great job. So 
definitely a lot of uses. Um, and all of it just really centers around how do you make doing business with you easier for your customer? Right. Yeah, no, it, it's really interesting. And the thing you just mentioned there is the web to text widget. Um, why would that be? Why is that uh, better even than live chat on your website? Oh, now I love that question. You're allowing me to get up on my soapbox. Um, <laughs> I, I, I just wrote a blog post with our positioning on this uh, the other week. Um, and it really comes down to this. Texting is a connection with your customer and live chat is just a session. So when you think about being able to start a text or a live chat, both are great because they're real time mm -hmm. um, and yeah. something that you can communicate faster uh, with, which that that's the win either or. Um, and this is not to say live chat doesn't have its place. It definitely does in, in e-commerce when you're trying to capitalize on that session. But for most small businesses, creating a permanent connection is far more important. So when they start a, a conversation or they start out as a lead over text, you now have a lifeline to text into them at any point in time mm -hmm. to uh, follow up with them, uh, to ask them additional questions for them to reach back out. They can ask you a question and then take off to go to the store, run errands, drop their kids off somewhere. And they're not cemented or stuck to your live chat window, uh, hopefully hoping that you're going to jump on and follow up with them. Um, and then lastly, all these live uh, chats are great, but staffing them and reply expectations are tough too. So what we found through our research is consumers, the majority said, over 50% said, if you respond back to me same day from a text, that, that meets my expectations. For right. live chat, it's a matter of minutes. Over 50% said, I want to hear back from you within minutes. So that puts even more stress on the business to correctly staff it and be responding quickly um, and have agents available to help because when live chat is offline, what we found out is 50% of users leave the website when they get that little message that says, hey, sorry, we're offline right now. Put in your email and we'll get back to you. The majority don't mm -hmm. do that. When they can send a text, then you can send an auto reply that says, hey, thanks, it's 1 a.m. We're not here right now, but we're, we'll respond to your text at, at 8 a.m. And now you're able to reach out to them in real time. Uh, you gave them an expectation. And when you reach it back out, you're reaching back out in SMS instead of reaching back out in the channel like email that they mm -hmm. tried to avoid in the first place. Yeah, you know, those are those are great points um, because let's face it, one of the most frustrating things with chat uh, on, on sites is Number one, when the delay, uh, you're waiting for somebody to come up and then you yep. reply and then there's a big gap and then you suddenly have to go off somewhere else and then you can't even find the chat anymore or yep. they've left you or whatever. It's a, yep. it's, it's, a, it's a very hit or miss experience. Absolutely. I, I capture screenshots when I go through these as a consumer myself to use in presentations, but it's like, yeah, I, I have moved on to another thing. I forgot I had a live chat open in a tab. Then when I remember the agent like came, asked a question and said, oh, looks like you're not here. And they left the chat. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I don't even want to restart that all over again. It doesn't, it didn't matter that much to me and I'm gone and they lost their opportunity and I'm moving on to try to find someone else to help me. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things that you touched on there, and I think this is a, in, incredibly important is the fact of, of the way the consumer, prospect, customer, the way they choose to communicate with you. Because here's one of the issues that I've seen over, over the last while is when people force their preferred way of communicating onto yes. you. So I, I always tell this story, somebody was telling me recently about doing a ride along, their sales coach and doing a ride along with the salesperson. And uh, this customer prospect texted the salesperson. So the salesperson immediately called them and had a kind of what he termed as an awkward conversation. And then afterwards, the coach said, uh, why'd you call him? And he said, well, you texted me and I thought better to connect live and everything. He said, but he texted you. Maybe he wanted to be texted back. Maybe that's the reason why the conversation was awkward. It would have been better if he'd have texted and said, would you like to get on a call live? Or is this, you know, do you want to continue over text, whatever? But by, by circumventing their choice, it made it awkward. Yeah, totally. Um, that That's a great point, John. Something that I just, you know, I refer to as the power of choice as well. And the analogy or the, I guess, comparable story I give people is, you know, think no different as payment options have grown over the decades. A business advertises that on their window, right? Here's the cards we accept. Mm -hmm. We take Apple Pay, we take Google Pay. 
um, to just help customers know, like, however you want to, you know, do this deal and, and pay for this service or product in our business, you're able to do so. We'll give you a bunch of options because we don't want those options to get in the way for you. Uh, so I think that is easily just as important in communication. Obviously, phone for forever. We have email. You can fill out forms online. But again, texting has become the number one preferred channel for how people like to communicate across their personal lives. So that's only leaking into their business life. So, you know, giving that option is really important. And we noted that when we created that web to text widget, not only can you start a text conversation, but the business can place other calls to action in there too. So when they open that up, they can say like, okay, yes, I want to call you. I want to text you. I want to click here for a free estimate. I want to click here to schedule an appointment. And that can be connected to like Savvy Cal or Calendly to schedule appointment. Um, so it really is, again, all about the, the first thing we want to do is create a conversion. Texting is a great mm -hmm. way, but there's other conversions that are going to be successful for that business that they want to capitalize on. And I guess um, obviously part of this is figuring out your internal processes as well about how you're going to handle it. Maybe you know training your people how to communicate you know, better through text. I mean, there's probably there's a lot of things behind the scenes to get this to get this ready to be done properly, right? Yeah, no, you're definitely right with that. And you know, one of the biggest tips I can give uh, people, especially when communicating via text, is like you know, be very intentional, like um, lead the customer and ask them like, hey, great, here's your answer to this. Can I answer anything else? And, you know, would you like to keep talking over text or would a phone call or email work better? Um, so that's a, a great way to what you asked before and for the business to put all, all the control in, in the customer's hands and let them drive which way that it wants to go or let them know, hey, yeah, I can schedule this. Would you like me to send you a reminder an hour or two ahead of, of that meeting um, so that it, it doesn't fall off your plate? So when you're intentional about those things and laying out what your next step is going to be, it's going to make the customer really happy. It leads to great communication. That leads to a great customer experience. You're likely going to land that customer and probably get yourself a five-star review at the end of it. Yeah, because what I, I like there is um, the way that, uh, you know, it's polite, it's it's giving choices, it's asking permission, it's not being presumptive. And, you know, as long as you follow that, I, the other example I always love is the uh, is the car dealerships when they say, how would you like to be communicated with? And you select email and then they phone you. <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> it, it's uh, I compare it to the the joke, right, where like your dad is uh, grilling steaks and he asks you how you want your steak done. And no matter what you say, you get it well done because he just yeah. let it cook for forever. It's that, that same kind of mentality, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's why I think it's it's incredibly important to uh, to make sure that if you are going to give these choices that you actually follow through with with um, delivering on the choice that the that the consumer is is making. And you mentioned here, you said you get better reviews. Um, explain that a little more, because I'm sure there's people that's piqued people's interest to hear that you can yeah. get more and better reviews if you're using text. Yeah, so I, I have a little bit of an unfair advantage in this realm. Um, prior to starting Leadferno a couple of years ago, I was a partner and CEO at a reputation management product that collected helped generate online reviews and collected customer feedback. Mm -hmm. um, and we worked with over 25,000 businesses globally. And so I got insight to millions upon millions of reviews. And it was amazing to me, um, two of the biggest things that bubbled up in both one and five star experiences were communication and expectations. Those are the things that, that made or, or broke experiences so often for businesses. So after we sold that company and I was, you know, going through a lot of uh, ideas that I'd had on what to start next, this one definitely popped up. And one of the things that I loved about it is it just contributed so heavily to a great customer experience. And what we see is when you have great communication and when you make it super easy to work with you as a business, like good or bad, that is such a differentiating factor. There's so many products and services um, that have such little difference in them ultimately when you get your hands on them or you receive those, but how they're given to you, how you're communicated with, what kind of expectations are set and followed up on, like those are the make or break, right? That's when people start talking to you about the difference in brand and the difference in customer experience. So when you're great from the very start at making communication easy and fast, and on a channel that they want to, and then you use that to continue to exceed their expectations and make it easy and, and make doing business with you easy, 
then when you get to the end and you're smart and proactive and you ask them for feedback and you ask them to write an online review because you know you've done a great job, you're doing it all through this channel that's made it very easy for them to communicate. They're more likely to leave that review and they're more likely to leave a great one because they've been impressed with how you've handled things and communicated at every step of the process. Yeah, you you make a great point there because I think the easy to do business with, this is something that I think not enough companies really look at. I, I always tell an anecdote. I ran a company a number of years ago and uh, a couple of companies for a parent company and one of them, uh, great product. People loved it. When I took over, I went to see the main, the, the biggest customers, you know, press the flesh and all that stuff. Yep. And they kept all telling me, love your products, love everything about it, but you're really hard to do business with. And that shocked the company when I came back with that feedback and I said, hey, guys, I love you. They just find it really hard to work with you. Um, so what are we going to do to fix this? And I don't think enough companies actually f take an external view or even get the feedback to figure out. They probably think, oh, we're, we're giving them all these options. We're cool. We're easy to do business with, but it's not always the case. Yeah. I mean, my opinion is your product has to be so absolutely incredible or differentiating to make up for if you have bad <laughs> delivery and communication with it. But on the flip side, you can have a very adequate product or service. But if you do a great job at, at communicating and following through on that process, it seems like your leaps and bounds different uh, than the next person that, that's offering it. So it's like, I, I look mm -hmm. as a business like, find your easier wins where, it, when, where you can. Now that said, communication is hard, right? Like I, I love the statement of like, Make, make communication easy for your customer, even if it's hard on you. And I think yeah. that's really hard for some business to adapt because you might not be a texter or a messenger yourself um, and enjoy communicating that way. You might be someone who wants to get on the phone. Um, and so you really have to work around and get a little bit more comfortable. That said, I tell people all the time when they start using our product, we see implementation from A to Z. So some people use it to the first question to be asked. They answer that question. Then they say, great, can we jump on a call? Can we make an appointment? They, they try to move them to a medium that they mm -hmm. like to while still giving that customer some, some choice as we talked about. All the way down to the ones that say, okay, this is so much easier because my service team can handle 20 text messaging conversations instead of just one phone call at a time. Um, so we wanna move as much as we can to text instead of phone or, or, or email. So in, in those realms, like there, there is some flexibility, but yeah, the main point is like, man, just make it easy for people. You'll see the benefits, even if it's hard for you to change gears or get used to a new medium at first. <laughs> yeah. And then just finally, uh, you know, in terms of people actually working with text, I mean, it, as you said, I mean, it's come from personal use and all of that. That's where most people's background is. So somebody might, uh, you know, might communicate with a ton of emojis. Somebody else might use acronyms. Somebody else might drop, you know, only use single letters for the, I mean, there's so many different ways that people communicate um, through text. Um, are there any, is there any right way of doing it or is it just the way that works best for you and your, your customers? Yeah, I, I definitely think because it has a business business angle to it, I definitely think there's a, a right way to do it. I, I would adhere mm -hmm. to more of professional communication than answering questions with uh, emojis or acronyms <laughs> uh, and, and things like that. So I definitely keep it to that level. But then also respect that text is a very personal channel. So doing small things like just adding your name to the signature when you're talking with them so they're reminded of the person who they're talking to because they're talking to a business and a business line. But if you're constantly signing your name, you know, let me know how else I can help. Thanks, Dash John. Um, then they, they know that there's a, a person on the other end that's taking mm -hmm. care of them. And that helps humanize the experience. And then most businesses, I think, do a pretty good job these days in being a little more in touch with what, you know, what is the personality of their brand, right? They're, they're already kind of putting out content on social channels mm -hmm. and other things so they understand it. Um, but I, I definitely, you know, business communication, still be personal. And as I alluded to earlier, like kind of go the extra step. There's almost room in every single reply to outline a next step or ask a question on what's going to happen next, what the customer wants next, an option uh, that, that they have. So when you take that kind of care with it, you're just making it really complete communication um, instead of uh, as fragmented as some of your messaging might be with a, with a good friend or a family member. Yeah, no, I think those are those are great points, and I would always err on the side of of being professional. And if uh, 
you know, however the conversation goes from there, but definitely err on the side of communication. I love that idea also about, uh, you know, making sure you know who it's coming from, because I get them all the time where it's just a number and, and yeah. I have to kind of vaguely decipher through what they're saying, trying to figure out who exactly it is and why they're texting me. Yep. And, and you get into things too, like our, you know, we have a lot of, right? Think of our product as like a, your texting app that you use in your personal life. But then we have a bunch of like business features layered over the top of it. Auto replies, mm -hmm. save messages that you can send in two taps that are hundreds of characters are already written out with questions, links, answers. Uh, so a lot of time-saving features. But another one of those is being able to transfer conversations between one team member to another. So if you're helping someone and you have somehow surface that someone else on your team is better equipped to help them because of expert knowledge, it's a specialty of theirs or just fits within your process. Mm -hmm. Then when you transfer them, they know that they left Aaron and now the next person jumps on and be like, hey, this is John now. I'm our expert with ABC and I'm going to be able to help you with this now. So it's really helpful from that experience, even knowing that they're passing from one person to another and being given, you know, very valuable and favorable and personable treatment by that company. That's just going to show up as a win as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Which obviously means you should uh, you need to map out your processes uh, and make sure that you have all this set up. But this is fantastic. Listen, thanks so much, Aaron. All of Aaron's information is going to be below this video. Um, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Lead for Now. Yeah. So John, I'm a 20 plus year digital marketing technology addict. I ran agencies for uh, 15 years before getting into the, the software side. As I mentioned, my uh, last company, GatherUp, um, we took that and uh, grew that into something uh, that was worth selling and being acquired to a, another company. Uh, and now, yeah, Leadferno, uh, we're highly based on education for sales. So if you go to Leadferno, click on our blog, you're gonna see a lot of uh, studies and research that we've done, all kinds of how-tos, use cases for texting, ways to think about it. Uh, at the end of the day, we just wanna help you unlock how helpful of a medium it is um, and show you all the ways you can use it. We think you'll stumble upon some great use cases uh, for your business. The, the simple way when people ask me, who is this great for? I always say, if answering a couple of questions might earn you a hundred or thousand dollar sale, you should be looking at this because it just makes asking questions and communicating easy. So leadferno.com. Uh, and you can even text us and ask us questions from there. <laughs> you might get me answering them. Be, it'd be great to, to talk and interact with you. Yeah, absolutely. And listen, I would encourage people to go check out leadferno.com. Uh, as I said at the beginning, this is this is kind of a new area for a lot of businesses, a lot of people. I would actually encourage people to go go talk to the experts because uh, there's probably a few probably a few rat holes you could disappear down if you're not careful. <laughs> one, one of those being integrating us with like Pipeliner. So you can go and mm -hmm. put all your contacts and your conversations into a CRM using Zapier. So a lot of great use cases. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Well, listen, thanks, Aaron. Thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again soon.